Hello everyone, and welcome back to Home Groups. I hope that your summer has thus far been one with some rest, maybe a vacation or two, and good times with friends and family. If you're still waiting for some of those things this summer, then I hope that right now, at this moment, in your home group, you're getting some of that much-needed summertime fun. If you've been joining us on Sunday mornings, you know that we are in a series right now called We Believe. Throughout this series, we're focusing on what we believe as followers of Christ and how what we believe determines our direction in life. Remember that what you believe determines your eternity, how you act, how you speak, what you become. What you believe determines your destiny. What you believe matters, so it's worth studying, discussing, and applying what we believe to our everyday lives. It's not just about vaguely aligning ourselves with a set of church doctrine, but really understanding and living to a set of values that are life-changing. Now, if you've not joined us yet on Sunday mornings for We Believe, uh, you can catch up on the messages on our website, our app, or our YouTube channel. And we sure hope that you will join us this next Sunday morning as we continue the series. Well, for our time in home groups tonight, I want us to focus on one of our key beliefs that we just recently learned about, and that is the ministry. Depending on how you came to faith in Jesus Christ and how long you've spent time within the church, you may have a certain notion about what that term means. We often use it within the church to capture a broad scope of what happens at a church or the activities that come out of the church. It's also used to define a vocation, like when we say that someone's called into the ministry. Or we use it to talk about servanthood opportunities as instructed to be a part of in Scripture. When we say something like, get involved in a ministry at Bethel Church. Well, which is it? Uh, which is correct? But frankly, all of them are, really. Uh, as a little bit of a recap, Scripture notes that the ministry encompasses the following. The evangelization of the world, worship of God, uh, building a body of saints who follow Christ and meeting the needs of those around us with love and compassion. Remember that like all of our core doctrine, ministry is something that is both a belief based on scriptural command and an action on our part. So since we want to discuss and apply scripture in home groups, let's focus now on ministry and how each of us can be a part of it, applying the teachings of scripture on ministry and putting them to action on a regular basis. One way to be involved in ministry is to obey the Great Commission by evangelizing the world. Jesus gives us this command in Matthew 28 as well as in Mark 16. In Mark 16, 15, Jesus says this, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. This instruction is among the final commands given to the disciples before Jesus ascended into heaven, then leaving us with the gift of his Holy Spirit to help us in fulfilling this mandate. To believe in and do ministry, we must obey this command. Telling others about how Jesus has saved us and changed us should be part of our regular lives as believers. In Acts 1.8, this command is expounded upon with some extra detail about where to start. Jesus says that we will be witnesses, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. As modern disciples, we apply this as the first disciples would have then, and that is to start witnessing in our closest locality, and then moving outward from the gospel from there. You see, they were to start with their local spot, Jerusalem, then move further into towns like Judea, and then further into regions like Samaria. Finally, doing the ministry of evangelism should take us to the ends of the earth. I would challenge you as an individual and as a home group to start this ministry with the people closest in your locality. Are you putting your belief into action by witnessing to your neighbors, your family, and your coworkers? Home groups, how about inviting your literal neighbors to your home group when they start back up in the fall? The first part of believing and doing the ministry is telling others about Jesus and what he's done for you. Let's commit to do that together. Another key part of the ministry is the worship of God. Romans 12, 1 through 2 gives us one of the best definitions of worship in Scripture. It says that we are to offer our bodies as living sacrifices to God. In a nutshell, the big idea is that worship is like a lifestyle. Uh, just like what we believe determines our direction, what or who you worship determines your devotion. Believer, who are you devoted to? Who gets the first and the best of you? Is it a person or a hobby or a job or maybe it's yourself? Or is it God? This is a key belief and an action point for us that we would worship God first, best, and most as we engage in his ministry. Scripture also tells us another part of the ministry is building ourselves and others up in ministry service to God and to others. 
In Ephesians 4, 11 through 16, we learn that Christ has equipped us with ministry gifts to do his work and to build the general body of believers up so that we can all become more mature in our Christian beliefs and lifestyle. In Galatians 2 and James 1, we see that we are to serve those who are poor, hurting, experiencing loss, and generally in need. It is on the topic of service that I want to spend the rest of our time on in discussion today. We've already talked a little about evangelism and worship, and now let's talk about how we serve. This part of our ministry to the Lord is very important and easily lived out regularly. The best way to do this around here is to get involved in a ministry team. From time to time, you'll hear our pastors talk about different ministry teams serving throughout the church, but it's more than from time to time that ministry teams are in action, making things happen at Bethel and meeting needs of the people around us. What we call ministry teams are the serving opportunities that help fulfill scriptures like what we've looked at today. These are our kids class leaders, our parking lot attendants, greeters, worship teams, ushers, homeless ministry, youth leaders, care groups, media teams, and prayer teams, just to name a few. The service opportunities at Bethel are almost endless. Remember that these and teams like them are both the work that makes a church happen and the means of obedience to scripture for every believer. It doesn't matter who you are, frankly. God has equipped you with gifts and means to serve him. Once you believe and are saved by Jesus, the next steps are to grow as a disciple of Christ and to serve him wholeheartedly. Serving in the ministry is not reserved for full-time pastors only, but it's meant for every believer to be a part of God's great family. In fact, you probably already have in your possession some of the gifts he has given you that make you ready to serve. In the book of Exodus, while God is calling Moses to go to Egypt and free the people of Israel, Moses is doubting that he can be used by God. And God asks him a simple question. He says, what's in your hand? In this case, it was a simple shepherd's staff. God commands Moses to throw it down and it immediately becomes a snake. Now, I know this story may not sound super fun, especially if you don't like snakes, but that's not the point. The bigger picture here is that God would go on to use Moses with what he had in his hand, his staff, to do some great things for the people and the kingdom of God. Moses would go on to do many miracles with that staff in hand, all while serving God and God's people. The point I want to make to you is that you have some things in your hand, so to speak, some talents, passions, honed abilities, and even some gifts that you may not have developed yet that God can use in his great ministry. I would encourage you now to think about and pray about how you can serve in ministry at Bethel if you're not already plugged in. You'll hear a lot more about this from our pastoral team in the coming months, but now's a great time to start serving in ministry at Bethel Church. If you want to learn more about how to serve on a ministry team, you can check out the Growing at Bethel tab on Bethel.org. You can email Pastor Paul or Pastor Ryan, or you can talk to one of our pastors on a Sunday morning. Let's now take this teaching and move to a time of discussion and prayer in our groups. As a pastoral staff, we hope that you have a great rest of your summer, And we look forward to doing ministry with you at Bethel Church. God bless.